I never thought when I was young that I would be standing here in front of all of you today. And that's not because I didn't want to change the world. I can remember being 15 years old and my mom was trying to convince me to go to this game night with these other youth. And I remember distinctly sitting there and I don't know why I said it, but I remember the feeling. And I said, mom, you grew up biking, bake sales, having fun. I was born to do something with my life. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't mean that in a rude way at all, but I just had this drive where I was like, I was born for to chart a new course and to change the world. And I had lots of ideas and dreams of how I wanted to do that. So why did I give up all of the things that I wanted to do when I was 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, all the things that I imagined doing to now dedicate my life to defending a man? Joseph Smith. When so many times people ask, well, why don't you focus on Jesus Christ? Like, isn't he the point, <laughs> right? And this is actually a question that I had myself and sometimes, but I always had this conviction where I knew, I remember when I was only a young girl and I heard, overheard people criticizing my dad for trying to start the Joseph Smith Foundation. And they said, you're ruining your kids' lives. What is the sacrifice worth? And he told them that God wanted him to do it. And I remember thinking, I'm giving up my life for this. I need to know for myself. So I went in my bedroom, and I got down on my knees, and I prayed. And I asked God if this was really what he wanted our family to do. And I got my answer. So I was on board, and I helped. Obviously, many of you guys knew me growing up, 16, 17. I feel like I grew up with so many in this crowd. This is my family reunions twice a year. Um, but um, I had to go through a transition. I had to learn to lose my life, to lose who I thought I was. And in the process of losing my life, I found it. And I found it in a way that has given me joy and it has given me peace that I cannot apologize anymore for who I am and what I stand for, and it's a joy I want every person to find for themselves. So I wanna share with you my story. So we grew up as a family, I'm the oldest of 10, doing books, doing documentaries, working hard, and, but I remember that my dad would talk about how important Joseph Smith was. And I thought, well, yeah, he's important. But so is Martin Luther and William Tyndale and all of so many heroes and heroines that I had. Why was he always talking about Joseph Smith? And then there was that question that sometimes people would ask and say, well, what about Jesus Christ? Aren't you detracting from him? But then my dad had an experience one day that when he had it, almost seven years ago, it didn't register in my mind until later, but he was praying one day to know what the answer was after he discovered that a very good conservative family had a son who had committed suicide. And so many other families around us were struggling with depression and anxiety, and he was praying to know, what do we do? How do we solve this problem? This family was a good family. <laughs> they were conservative, they were homeschooling, they were making all of the sacrifices, and then this happened to their son. And he heard this voice in his mind, I am the way. <laughs> Right? It's so simple. Jesus Christ is the way. He's the solution. It's that simple. <laughs> but then he thought, but so many people in our day and age have a different understanding of who Jesus Christ is. They all have a different a way that they're getting to him. How do we know the way? And he heard the words, I have sent my servant, Joseph Smith. That is really the pinnacle of when our family shifted. We were originally Zion Vision. We went through a bunch of different organization names and it settled on Joseph Smith Foundation because, he said, we're trying to point people to Jesus Christ. And I was good with that. That was great for me. And then I hit a point in my life that I never thought would happen. I was sitting in a room with my dad as he was dying of stage four lung cancer. Anyone who has lost a loved one to cancer knows that it is an experience that no one understands unless you've walked through it. 
until you've watched someone's life slip away from this disease. And when the turning point came that I knew through the Spirit that he was not going to live, I realized that I needed, that I, a huge responsibility was going to fall on my shoulders. But I felt at peace. In fact, one morning as the sun was coming up, I had the distinct thought, no matter what happens to you, Hannah, no matter what happens to your family, everything is going to move forward and it's going to be okay. But I was working one morning, it was probably about four or five in the morning, um, with um, caring for my dad. In the last month or two, he required 24 seven care. So my siblings and I would change out. Every few hours we would sleep and then we would wake up, we would do our shift, repeat. And so I was on my shift, the house was quiet, and I was working on a project for the Joseph Smith Foundation when the distinct question came to my mind, Hannah, where is Joseph? Joseph is missing. And I thought, what? He's right here. Like literally, I was planning out a curriculum sheet and there was an entire section on Joseph Smith. Joseph Smith's teachings were all the way through. What do you mean he's missing? And then a number of hours later, I got a text from a very dear friend and we were communicating back and forth about an ex upcoming conference and different topics. And I had asked him, what was it about the Joseph Smith Foundation? What was it that we had done out of all the different books and documentaries and topics that was the most important for him? And he responded back that he said a lot of people are fascinated by, you know, the prophecies and Messiah ben Joseph and ancient artifacts and things like that. But he said, all of that doesn't really matter. The most important thing that had changed his life was the simple fact of understanding Joseph Smith as the leader of the, the dispensation and the voice of Jesus Christ, instilling him as that authority. And I remember when I got the text, I was like, that's lame. <laughs> um, and, but then immediately the spirit hit me with conviction. And he said, Hannah, he gets it and you've missed it. You have sat in your home being raised doing these projects and you have missed the entire point of why this is so important. And then the next impression that came was, your father's going to pass away and you're going to be the one in charge, and you're not ready. He's missing. You don't know what you're doing. You need to figure it out. I got down on my knees in that bedroom, and I pled with God to help me because I didn't know what I was going to do. But I decided to give it my best shot. I realized that I hadn't put as much time into studying Joseph Smith's teachings as I should. Sure. I knew more than pretty much everyone else I talked to. I could hold my own when I went to church or conferences, right? But did I really know them as I should? Could I really articulate what Joseph Smith had taught on any subject? Did I know the blueprint? Did I know the strategy? Did I know the plan? I didn't as I should. So a few months after my father passed away, I made a commitment that every day I was going to study Joseph Smith's teachings. And before I knew it, my life began to change. I discovered first Joseph Smith's teachings on discerning spirits. And within days, the Lord showed me why I needed that in my life. He showed me why I needed to use those teachings to help others, and it came alive. The next month was Joseph Smith's min Minutes to the Relief Society. And overnight, it was like the Lord was opening my eyes to a new world. He said, Hannah, this is the kind of a wife and this is the kind of a mother you need to be and you're not ready. You have so much feminism in you. And I thought, feminism? I'm the one that's been fighting feminism from day one. And the Lord said, you've been fighting feminism your way. You've been trying to get to Christ your way, your understanding, but you haven't seen Jesus Christ you need to go through the servant that I sent to reveal Jesus Christ to you. So God stripped me last spring and last summer. It was the best thing that ever happened. He started me back to the basics. You know nothing. We're just going to start over from square one. I started with joy, faith, charity, missionary work, the basics of the basics. But instead of going to the Lord and saying, I've read the Book of Mormon a million times, 
I know a lot of different teachings about it. I stripped it down to the basics and said, okay, God, I'm going to go to the servant that you sent to deliver this message, who knew you, who talked with you, and who you sent to reveal Christ to me. What did he say? And when we are humble and when we are sincere, God begins giving you the answers. And slowly upon slowly, my very foundation was reshaped and remolded in powerful ways. I was just recently talking to a relative of mine, and she looked at me and she said, Hannah, you have changed. I've noticed it. What's happened to you? It's for the better. You're so much more gentle. You're so much more in tune. You're the, still the same person. You have the same convictions. It's not like your beliefs have changed at all, but your character is so much better. And there is a spirit and a light that we want. And I thought, it's this simple. I got back in line and back in order with Joseph Smith, and I took him seriously. After I began stripping down those basics and that foundation, <laughs> and just studying and studying and pleading with the Lord to teach me line upon line, precept upon precept. Last fall, I was in sacrament meeting when the word came distinctly to my mind, you have a firm foundation, now go build the house. And step by step, I began being led to passages about the gathering of Israel, why the Book of Mormon was important, questions that in the past I had thought, yeah, they say the Book of Mormon is so important, and it's important, but not really understanding why, why President Benson had emphasized the Book of Mormon, why my dad had stayed up late at nights to study Joseph Smith's words, and why he said the JST was so critical. Oh, I knew answers. I could give answers, but did I really understand? I didn't. And it was time to now build that structure that would then help me lead my family, and lead myself in the right direction. So we began building that firm foundation, and very soon there came the next step. This spring, then I was in my room and again had hit another turning point, and I was asking God for more answers. And I heard, Hannah, you have now, you've gone to the basics and you've begun to understand these new things and you've been building the structure and discovering your mission in a new way. But you need to heal. You have used the atonement to heal sins that you committed, mistakes that you committed. But it's time now to heal from trauma and from things that others have done to you. And I told the Lord I didn't know how to do that. And again, he led me to Joseph Smith's teachings. Because I didn't go to the Lord and say, I already know how to do this, now I will do it. I was humble now because I realized in the past I had obeyed, but now it was time to learn how to submit. And I can tell you that God sent me on a journey. Once I decided I don't understand covenants, I don't understand how all of this works, but I want to know and I'm willing to put in the time and the sacrifices and the effort to go pull off Joseph Smith's teachings and study it and plead with the Lord to open my eyes. He taught me the new and everlasting covenant in a way I'd never comprehended before, and with it came understanding things about my identity, about my family, about my future, and about the past in ways that healed scars that some said would never be healed. Those spiritual experiences came from Joseph Smith. I would have never gotten to Christ without going through the servant that the Lord appointed to be the messenger. I truly believe that every single one of us has questions and doubts and worries. I'm here to tell you that the Lord has the answer, and he knows without a shadow of a doubt. But every one of us has to come to the point where we're willing to bow the knee. See, so many people out there talk about how they love Jesus, and they talk about how we're going to believe in Jesus Christ, and we're going to defend his teachings and become like him. But they're not willing to submit the way God asked them to come to know who the real Jesus Christ is. We have a fake Jesus in our culture. Actually, we have billions of them. Every single one of us in our brains has a different idea of who Jesus Christ is. The reason why Joseph Smith matters, the reason why his foundation matters is because he knew better than all of us. 
And we have to come to a point in our lives where we say, okay, Lord, I don't know, but I want to know who the real Jesus Christ is. Reveal it to me. And we have to go through the way the Lord asked. The Lord said in Doctrine and Covenants section 21, he said to the church, this is the day the church was organized on April 6th, 1830. He said, church, give heed to all of Joseph Smith's words and his commandments as he receives them. And if you will do this, the gates of hell will not prevail against you. The powers of heaven will shake for your good. I can bear a personal witness and a testimony that in my life, over the last year and a half, two years, it was easy when my dad was alive. He had the foundation firm. He had the witness. He knew the way. I just had to obey. I just had to follow. When I was on my own, I had to decide if I was going to continue my way or if I was going to go through my own revolution, my own change of heart. And that came through sacrifices to study and come to know the real Jesus Christ through Joseph Smith, to ask those true questions. You can learn about a father through his son. We talk so much about Jesus Christ. The one we always forget is God the Father. Jesus Christ, the whole reason he came was to tell us who God the Father really was, because we have the same problem. Everyone had a different idea of who God the Father was. So Jesus Christ came to show, no, this is the real God. This is the real Father. And then Jesus Christ moved on. And everyone got a different idea of who Jesus Christ was. So he sent another son, Joseph Smith, to show us who Jesus Christ really is, how he really acts, how he really thinks, what he would really do if he was here. We need to turn our hearts. We need to find answers the way the Lord intended. I'm sharing this story because if I had not taken this path a year and a half ago, Two years ago, if I had not been humble in that room, when I got that text message from my friend to realize, wait a minute, he's right, and I'm wrong, and I'm missing something. I have way more knowledge than he does. I have way more easy background and experience. But he was in tune with the Spirit in a way that I was not because I hadn't been willing to yield. I thought I was. And I just didn't understand why the first thing my dad did after he came home from an intensive surgery and he's in pain was to turn to the words of Joseph Smith by Andrew E. Hoff for comfort, right? Dad, watch a movie, go get some food, go get a snack. But why the joy that he would get from going and studying those teachings, but now I understand. And I want every single person to be able to find that joy because every one of you can. Every one of you can walk into any room and know with confidence that you know the strategy, you know the blueprint to build Zion. And once you get that testimony, it's not enough to know Joseph Smith was a prophet. You need to know what he taught and how to go and build Zion his way. And if you, we will turn our hearts, turn back, making those, studying those teachings a priority, Studying his words a priority. It, it should be on our lips, on our tongues every day and every night. If we will do that, I know that God will fulfill that promise. The gates of hell will not prevail. The powers of heaven will shake for our good. And then what do we do? We do what Jesus told Peter once Peter was led to Christ. Feed my sheep. We have to help those that are starving find the same joy and the same peace and the same answers. And that is why, even though I never thought it 10 years ago, I will dedicate the rest of my life to helping people find Christ through Joseph Smith because I know it is the way and I know it is the answer and we can revolutionize the world by turning our hearts. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.